Saving for retirement at different stages in life can look a little bit different. And today we're going to talk about what things you should consider early in your career, mid-career, late career, and even when you retire. So let's get right into this topic. My name is Sean Moran. If this is the first time you're listening or watching, I'm the host of the Red Barn Financial Podcast. I'm a financial advisor here in Middle Tennessee, where I help my clients locally as well as nationally, virtually. So let's talk about this. So the most important thing to do, and you've probably heard this plenty of times, is to start as soon as you can, because the younger you are, the value of compounding is huge. And so if you think about it, even a small amount of money early that can sit and grow, earn interest, earn dividends, and just watch the growth over the course of, say, 30 or 40 years is so much better than a lot of money with only a couple of years to grow. So the key is to really get started. If you're just getting out of school and you're starting your first job, or maybe you're early in your career, you haven't started yet, but you're saying, yeah, this is something I really need to do. Absolutely encourage you to get started right away. Now, early in your career, you're probably earning much less than you're going to make later on in your career. And so when you have a low amount of income, then you're more likely to want to go for a Roth when it comes to your work 401k or when it comes to saving on your own. Why? Because if you're in a lower tax bracket, then the tax deduction isn't as valuable to you. And Roth is actually after tax money. So basically you take the money, you don't get a tax deduction in the year that you're putting the money in, but that money gets to grow for the rest of your career. And when you take that money out, then you don't have a tax implication to it. You get to take it all out tax-free. So if you're not really getting much of a tax deduction anyway, because you're not making a lot of money, or maybe you're in a 12% or even 10% tax bracket, or maybe you're a small business owner and you're not making a lot of money yet. And in that case, then by all means, you definitely want to consider the Roth because the benefit of the tax deduction is not that much to you. But how much do you want to put in? A lot of people, minimum, if you're working for a job that has a match, you want to minimum put in the matching amount. So if you put in 6%, let's say, and the company matches another 6%, then you've just got 12%. So that's huge. A lot of companies aren't offering a Roth option, but if they do, again, early in your career, you might want to do that. But generally speaking, you want to save as much as you can, up to as much as 15%, maybe even more if you can, of your income towards retirement. And oftentimes people think, well, I need that money for my lifestyle. Well, if you put the money away before you actually get it in your hands and find a way to work on living within that lifestyle, within that means of what's remaining, paying yourself first, that's absolutely huge. So save as much as you can when you're starting out. Try your best to put as much money as you can away for retirement uh, because only later on you're going to find, yes, your income goes up, but as you get married, you have family responsibilities, kids going to school and all the things that are involved, if that's your, your lifestyle path, you're going to find that it's going to be valuable to save as much as you can early. And uh, as I mentioned, saving in a Roth early on can really help. Now, when you're mid or hot later in, career, in your career and you're earning a high amount of salary, you may not have the option to invest in a Roth because beyond certain income limitations, somewhere in the $200,000 range, you won't qualify for a Roth IRA or Roth 401k. Uh, and so potentially maybe the Roth 401k, but the Roth IRA for sure, you uh, won't necessarily qualify for depending on your whether you're single or married 100 and 150 to 250 thousand dollars ish anything more than that you don't qualify for the Roth so you might want to do that earlier in your career and then later on let's say you're making 300 400 500 thousand dollars a year then that's where the tax deduction might make sense and you might say okay well I want to put in as max as much money as I can into my work plan and I do see the value in putting that money into my traditional and getting a tax deduction. Now I'm saving 35, 37% in taxes. Sounds like a good deal for, for me. And I don't have a ton of money already in my traditional IRA or traditional 401k uh, that it's going to cause such a big number that required minimum distributions would be a problem later on. Then I might want to start doing that. So traditional later in my career can save me some money on taxes and it could be a really good solution for me. 
And now the other part is that you want to consider a combination of a blend between the two could be right for you. So you may say, oh, my work will, uh, you know, will match dollar for dollar, 6% of my salary. I'm making a hundred thousand dollars. I'll put in 6,000. They're putting in another 6,000. That's 12,000. Then I'm going to go in and put money into a, an IRA if I have that, that income level. And here's where planning can actually help. Let's say you're getting close to that $200,000 number. You might be able to say, okay, well, if I put a certain amount of money or add a little bit more to my 401k uh, pre-tax, I can actually lower my income level to where I qualify for a Roth IRA or I qualify for other things. And this is where planning really comes into account. This is where a financial advisor like myself can help you to be proactive, to make sure that you're looking at your numbers and making sure that you're looking at the situation and getting yourself dialed in to where you need to be. So maybe you qualify for that IRA. And then later on in your career too, when you say, okay, well, maybe I'm uh, retired or maybe I'm going closer to retirement, but before I'm required to take required minimum distributions in retirement, I can look and say, are there ways that I want to be tax efficient in converting my, some of my pre-tax dollars into after-tax dollars using Roth conversions? Or can I then maybe, uh, maybe I'm just have a part-time job after I retired from my main job. And so my income's lower and this might be another opportunity for me to start doing more money into Roth. So uh, then come into retirement, you want to manage the money. So you say, okay, well, how much can I take out early enough so that I'm not up against uh, Irma potentially, which is a situation where if you make a lot of money, uh, then in retirement, or you have to withdraw a lot from your uh, IRAs or 401ks, you might be in a situation where uh, you're actually putting yourself into a higher bracket, which would cost you more money for the same amount of Medicare. So if we can plan to avoid that early on, then that would save you potentially tax money as well, or I'll call it the Medicare tax in that you're going to pay more money for your um, you know, Medicare than other people are for the exact same coverage. And then also, depending on how much money you make in retirement, and that, and it doesn't mean that you have a job, it could mean the amount of money that's coming out of your retirement plans, you may have some portion or up to 85% of your Social Security taxable. And there could be a way through planning that we can actually lower that number and make less of that money taxable earlier on so that you, when you get to the social security years, you may not have to worry about that and, and, or pay less money in social security ta taxes on your social security by taking some of that out sooner. So those are some of the strategies that when you're working hand in hand with a financial advisor, you can put into play. Uh, so if that's something that sounds interesting to you and you'd like to have a deeper conversation about that, by all means, reach out, uh, share this information with others. Uh, share this podcast with other people, subscribe, uh, like, share. Uh, that helps this podcast, helps it get in front of more people to share this information. That would be really helpful to them. So thank you so much for listening to this episode of the Red Barn Financial Podcast. Go back and listen to some other ones and we'll see you in the next episode.